So I'm out here in the woods, finishing up a run, hike, a rike. Uh, yeah. And thought I'd make a recording. Don't know whether I'll post it. Been trying to get a podcast off the ground, but lots of distractions lately. So this other guy that I follow started a podcast and just puts up recordings without a video of himself talking on uh, YouTube. And it's interesting because you're really focused on the voice and the audio, which I know from podcasting, but sometimes the face is a distraction. It shouldn't be, but we're traveling towards that. So anyways, that was my thought about doing a little podcast on YouTube without any video and anything on the screen, really. Just a black screen. So if you're here listening and I actually post this, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, it's a crazy world and a beautiful world. And lately, as always, I do a lot of processing, observing, um, watching what's going on, and really living with some challenges that are out of the ordinary. I think we all have challenges that are out of the ordinary, so not to title myself as special, but there are some extremes that I don't think people are familiar with in ways that are, we, things we have to look at are, that are just really unfathomable and unfair on so many levels, and really, there's miracles, and there's energetics, and there's a lot of new healing tools, but in a lot of ways, the majority of the population won't be able to take advantage of that because they're really locked in the programming of thinking that, you know, it's all at the physical base. We can heal everything down here. Um, and they're doing, it's getting better at healing certain things, but at the cost of our autonomy and our independence and our freedoms. And I get it. I get like, there's so many people that just will never be able to get this because they haven't lived with someone that maybe is in a wheelchair or has severe autism that is in diapers for their entire life and throws shit at walls or someone who never will be able to drive or reads at a really rudimentary level and has a lot of impulse and anger issues that are so tricky and complicated because kind of what happened and what's happened that I see and I'm not going to say it's not a gift um, this this journey but it's also really challenging to watch like rote suffering watch people you love and you kind of know a little bit more like when you learn more I learned about the fact that maybe all the hacks or Ruskies aren't helpful um you know that was a huge awakening for me and a really set off a lot of awarenesses about, well, my own medical health, mental health with, in our rehab community, that whole addiction area where medications are used. And again, there's so, so many that I think, yes, use the fucking medications or yes, use the neural link because in this 3D reality, it is going to improve your quality of life for the time being. So no judgment on any of this, just trying to evolve personally and seeing, seeing these traps that we are really like set up for us and that we're navigating in this game, this huge game that we get to be in and uh, learn from and beautiful, beautiful, but also, like I said, muddy, fucking awful, bloody hell, but we're alive, we're alive, we're alive, we're in these human bodies, we are light in these human bodies and it's amazing and I'm grateful. Uh, so yeah, like I was saying, um, what I struggle with is, yeah, so they get the hacks or your own Ruskies and that can exacerbate any condition really. Um, and some people have vulnerabilities to it. Like I believe my offspring did with a, a genetic mutation that they came in with. And then all you, know, you throw, I don't know how many doses they got of the hacks or your Ruskies, but, uh, way more than I did, way more than their dad did, way more than their granddads did their grandmas, uh, and I believe it's a f impacted, exacerbated what necessarily would be still be a challenge, but not at the level that it's a challenge now. And then they're put on medications when epilepsy steps in as a manifestation of said rare disease, 
and um, then others mental health issues because they're really dis there's a lot of dysregulation. Um, so it's just this chronic cycle and you get on that train and oh, you can extract yourself personally, but if you're a caregiver and you're caring for individuals that are in the system and again, there's ways certain people, many people have been able to, you know, clean out the heavy metals and reduce the autism, um, the impact of an autism diagnosis to the point where it's not even relevant. That's beautiful, but not everybody's going to be able to do that. And having compassion for that, having compassion for those that just aren't, aren't, and that that's okay too. They are not, you're not better. They're not worse. You know, we're all on different, different paths in the river, the river of life. So back off the judgment. And I say that to myself because I get righteous too. I get righteous about the stuff that I've discovered and learned about and implemented. And I get ashamed about the stuff that I haven't, that I ignore, that I don't want to learn about and implement because it's too much. Like you're always set up because there's always something new that you might be able to implement to help your kids, even as they get into their 20s. It's it's just, especially if you're a caregiver. Um, so you're kind of caught up in their, their PTSD and it's really mucky to not let it be the CPTSD thing all the time to use these, these labels, which I hate. Just a lot of trauma, a lot of remembering of, of like traumas that are like really hardwired um, in the body. So uh, I'm realizing and I'm aware of that how often I feel unsafe and um, how as time has passed, how hard it is to feel safe in my own, in a lot of ways more safe, but in some ways at sometimes I see the vast, the vastness of how I felt unsafe and have used not so healthy coping mechanisms that um, have impacted, had made choices. Uh, it's just such an uneven, choppy playing table in the game that I feel compelled to talk about it. And uh, stepping out of the victim mentality and realizing we freaking chose all this, holy crap, that was a huge one for me. And you don't have to believe that. That's what I choose to believe, that we plan our incarnations to develop, uh, not as a soul, because our soul is whole, but to to learn these lessons and this density, this frequency where there's so many experiences to be had, so much, so much. And so if we choose to be here and we choose to be a portal for kids that have disabilities and they choose to come in and have those, I bow. I bow to the whole sequence there. Um, and a lot, well, like that, you know, this happened to me, not for me. It always is for us. But that is so fucking like slap my face and bullshit Arona Ruski because goddamn, there's some days I want to punch anybody that thinks that or says it to me or my own remembrance of it. But it's too far now. I've learned too much. And so I hold that remembrance no matter what I'm going through, that this is a gift, even though it isn't in that moment. And my avatar is having a shit fit. She can't sleep. She's judging herself. She's shaming. She's like, everything's coming up hard in her face. And um, she knows that she's she's an avatar. She's observing it all too. And there's another side to it. And it's just, it's intense. It's, it's feeling and it's going to pass through. It's going to pass through and not anchoring it in with trauma hooks, which is what happens. These special needs situations. And before you know it, every single member of the family is on 10 different medications and they've all got chronic illnesses and rare diseases and they're overweight and you know, they can't access the resources or, or they have the money and they access different resources. And it, that's fine. Again, I have to go back to we're all in the river. When we're, exp I guess it's the expectations that, um, we're not allowed to be human and talk about this and feel our way through and really talk about how it's hard and it, you get you get hardwired in some ways to be cold and callous and in some ways your heart is just so broken every day and you have to let it break every day to get through and no one can really do that. So you get these these calluses and that's what I'm finding. I'd had a lot of calluses and now the calluses are coming off. So I'm watching, uh, feeling a lot of heartache. I'll be right honest. It's heartache. It's heartache to watch people that really have it, it, it wrotely down here. It doesn't look fair. It's just freaking they chose it, whatever. It ain't fair. And it's hard to watch. And extracting yourself from that mindset is is can be excruciating um, and not allowing that to shade the color of the rest of your life. So um, come to the woods. I, I have my regimens and routines and plant medicine and all the things I do. And I realize how many things I do. Um, 
to just kind of keep moving, just keep keep the routine. You know, we all have need structure and whatnot, and that's really valuable. These things that I don't want to do them all the time, but kind of like shuffling my feet through the routines and the regimens, and letting the shitty feelings be there while I freaking take my cold shower and have the shitty attitude while I'm meditating. Maybe it'll last all day, two days. Who knows? But also knowing that this is for me and somehow it's in front of me to go through. Gosh, that's so hard, even right now, because I'm still in the middle of stuff. I'm not all the way out the other side of this, this like punisher, like, oh, this painful, heart aching portal that or place I go through that comes up from time to time and seeing the patterns. And yeah, I probably sound like a crazy nut, but um, I think you get the gist of it. Woo, 1111. That was what I just saw. So I'm going to roll this out. This is kind of the wrap I'm going to try to do. It'll probably be similar themes to this. I'm not going to give it a whole lot of structure. I'm going to try to talk, I don't know, maybe once or twice a week on just what is coming through me at the time that I pick up the recorder to record and hopefully inspire you all to do this yourselves. We should all be talking out loud. Let's hear it. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's put them up on a podcast. And if you don't want to do it for anybody else and you're not a crazy nut like me that wants to talk out loud and be heard and be seen, and maybe that's a pattern too. And this is all my process. You get to witness and trauma imprints and lordy, lordy, lordy. And, you know, whatever other fuckery has programming is filtered in. Yeah. Just kind of swimming up, swimming up into the light. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Love to you all. And yeah, tune in.